I was in an, a work accident when I was 19. Got crushed in a cardboard compactor. I was just screwing around. And my plan was when, as it got closer, I was just going to jump off. Um, so one of my coworkers got nervous and turned it off. As I was right on the edge of the conveyor belt to step off, he turned it back on, and so I fell into the bin. And then I slipped, and I got part way out, and the crushing bar crushed my legs right through the knee and below the knee. They weren't severed. They were just, like, badly uh, crushed. Then I went to the hospital, and then I did surgery, and they kind of reestablished arterial circulation. It was uh, probably never going to happen. I was there for... 10 days in that hospital, uh, and then my dad had me transferred to another hospital, so he was, he was concerned that they were trying too hard to save my legs and uh, risking my life. As soon as I got there, they, they were like, well, this leg's coming off, it's just a question of today or tomorrow, and we might be able to do something with this leg. So I cut that one off the next day, and three days later, they cut my right leg off. I think I had a kind of overriding feeling that uh, things would be okay, that I would, you know, I'd be fine eventually. One time I was at a pool, and this little kid in Oakland said to me, will your legs grow back? And I was like, no. He goes, you could pray. <laughs> I was like, okay. Didn't think of that one. Damn. And I knew I had to get as strong as I was or stronger. The, more, the stronger I got, I knew the more mobility I'd have. I wanted to get to the point where I could uh, you know, wheel to the store, and back, do something easily, not like, think, can I make it there and back? And I want to be able to um, have, have a lot of mobility and a lot of functionality. Soon after I got home, I, I was introduced to wheelchair basketball, and that really helped my um, wheelchair mobility skills a lot. When I first played it, I, I kind of liked it. I thought it was okay, and I went back another time, and it you know, seemed like it was kind of fun. And I remember like about the third time, I remember, like a ball bouncing off of somebody's chair and going out of bounds. And I remember wheeling after it kind of quickly, grabbing it, picking it up, and then coming back and then starting to play. And it felt like uh, I was running and I was playing a sport. And then through basketball, I found out about track, uh, wheelchair track racing and road racing, and I started doing that. And I guess it was just, it was just fun. You know, that's why, that, that's the thing that motivated me was I enjoyed doing it. You know, it was a challenge. Well, see, the whole reason he got into dance was because I went to a dance preschool because I had a lot of energy as a child. I wanted to make a dance featuring dancers with and without disabilities and hopefully uh, family members that could dance together. And so they approached me and asked me if I'd be interested in doing that. When they first asked me, I, was, I wasn't interested. I was like, oh, you know, kind of like felt obligated to do it. I, didn't, I wasn't excited about it. It was, a lot, I, it was a lot more fun than I thought. I really enjoyed the whole process, seeing the piece start from nothing and come into existence. They asked me if I wanted to do this dance, Ashes, and that was a real hard, to, hard thing to figure out how to do, because I'm hanging upside down, aping the air. Um, and I'm lifting a dancer over and over again. After that, I just started dancing, you know, doing one or two dances a year with them. I 
in some ways I kind of look at it as an extension of life, an extension of a way of life. Jim Morrow approached me uh, and said he wanted to choreograph, set a solo on me. And he said um, he wanted to, he wanted me to dance in my chair, out of my chair, and on my chair. And I was like, on my chair, what do you mean? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> The guy who saw the piece uh, was, he was a wheelchair user and, at, at the in concert at Momenta. And he said that it a lot, and he had um, MS, multiple sclerosis. And he said that um, the piece allowed him to look at his wheelchair differently. He kind of lumped his wheelchair in with the MS and didn't like the wheelchair either. And then he's like, by looking at the wheelchair, totally separate in this piece, he realized that it's, the wheelchair is a tool to give you mobility, or it's a tool to, you know, do something with it. You know, it's something you can use to, to help you. And so he gave him the ability to look at his wheelchair you know, in a more positive light. That's the kind of thing that makes me want to do, you know, keep doing work, because I think that's, that's a valuable reaction. As a person with a disability, one of the things I, I want to do is create more uh, connection between uh, people with disabilities and, and people without disabilities, you know. I just want uh, everybody to you know, treat each other well and to accept each other and not be intimidated by somebody or be scared or uh, feel uncomfortable. I, you know, I would think in an ideal world, uh, disability would be, you know, a part of who you are, but not define you. And um, if everybody was comfortable with that, there'd be more connection and less isolation and, you know, just enrich everybody's lives. Mm -hmm.